Hey there and welcome back. This is Felix from Gold Amber Vintage Watches. Today we're going to talk about a timepiece that is easily overlooked and quite unfair so. The Omega Seamaster Deville. The pieces of the collection differ in terms of complications, materials, movements, colors, hands, indexes and case diameter. And for this reason you can be sure that there is a Deville to suit every style and preference. So would you like to find out which Deville suits you? Then enjoy the intro and let's get started. For some reason, the Omega Deville is always chosen to mark horological milestones for Omega since its birth in the 1960s. But before we dive into the history of the model line, let me introduce you to today's Deville, which comes from the top shelf of the model line. Our present Deville dates back to the 60s, has a three-body 18 karat yellow gold monocoque case and is equipped with a 2.25 mm thick Milanese bracelet. And everything that looks like gold on this watch is massive gold. From the dial, the hour markers, the hands to the clasp, and it weights a whooping 107 grams in total. It does not have a snap-on or screw-down case back as usual, but a so-called monocoque case, which provides an even higher water resistance than usual case back types. This type of case is not opened on the back as usual, but directly under the bezel. The bracelet, on the other hand, opens and closes through an ordinary folding clasp. On the back of the watch, we see the famous Seahorse logo of the Seamaster series, which can be also found on Speedmasters and Railmasters of the time. In my opinion, it's beautifully detailed, and if it wasn't too bad, I would make a necklace out of such a case bag right away. The Seahorse logo has its roots in Greek mythology and the gondolas of Venice. In Greek mythology, the so-called Hippocampi were sea monsters with the head of a horse and the lower body of a fish. According to the Greek legend, Poseidon, the god of the sea, drove a chariot drawn by Hippocampi. If you've ever ridden a gondola through the canals of Venice in Italy, you've probably noticed a pair of decorative metal Hippocampi on each side of the boat. These are said to be a symbol of protection for the gondolas, the drivers and the passengers. So I think most of you are familiar with the observatory emblem of the Bag of Constellations, which was creatively penned by an engraver who worked for Omega in the 1950s. A few years later, the same engraver, Jean-Pierre Ball, took a trip to Venice and noticed the Hippocampi on the gondolas. These seahorse-like status served as an inspiration for his next engraving. In 1958, the Hippocampus became the symbol of the Omega Seamaster to emphasize the watch's water resistance. An absolute stroke of genius, if you ask me. But enough from the case back logo, let's continue with the Deville collection. Markus, our article writer, did not miss the chance to create a great graphic for today's video. Here on the left, you can see what share the Deville had of all Omega watches produced in the period from the 1960s to 2000. The orange line represents the Seamaster Deville and the blue line represents the Deville collection, which was introduced independently in 1967. On the right side, we can see what materials the Deville line was made of. About 36% of all pieces were made in steel, 24% in yellow gold, 90% in bicolor, 4% in white gold and only 2% in rosé gold. On the left chart, we can clearly see when the Deville had its heyday. You can say the 1980s were the golden age of the Deville with a percentage of 18% of all Omega produced watches. Doesn't sound like much, but it's a huge amount when you consider who the company's intern competitors were. No less than the classic constellation next to the famous sports models like the Speedmaster, Seamaster and Railmaster. The dimensions of our today's piece are 34.5 mm without crown, 42 mm from lac to lac, 18 mm between the lacs and a thickness of only 9 mm, 
which makes it particularly light and comfortable to wear. But the complete side spectrum ranges from 22mm ladies models to a maximum of 36mm. The three hands are driven by an Omega automatic caliber 552, which was produced from 1958 to 1969. But the DeVille collection has been powered by different calibers over the years. Without date function, with date function, chronographs, quartz pieces of the 80s, up to tourbillon complications of the early 1990s. So if we take a closer look on the dial, the first thing we will notice is the simple design and the classic beauty. Three plain pencil hands inlaid with onyx, sleek baton hour markers, also topped with onyx. Taking all the models listed online together, the classic DeVille has a round 34mm steel case, silver dial, pencil hands and baton hour marker. But even here, there's a huge variety. Everything you can see on the dial was variable over the decades. The dial was available in silver, black, gold or gray with different textures and crosshair decorations. The hour markers in baton shape, full Roman and Arabic numerals, quarter numerals, dagger indices and so on. The choice of hands range from stick and pencil to dauphine and alpha shapes. What is particularly worth mentioning when we talk about the diversity of the model range is the selection of case shapes. Everything you can imagine was there. From round, like our today's watch, to C-shaped, rectangular, square, and especially during the quartz era, very special and futuristic case variations were offered to distinguish the DeVille from the competition. But what does the DeVille lettering actually mean? What did Omega want to communicate with this lettering? Unfortunately, Omega leaves this question open and there are no film statements about the origin of the name. Personally, I think the name could be a reference to the occasion of wearing the watch. The V is French and stands for of the city. So an elegant and simple dress watch with all the advantages of the theme master line for everyday use in the city in contrast to the sporty lines of the same house, such as the Speedmasters, originally for car racing, or the Seamasters with close links to water sports. As you can see from this 1960s ad from the United Kingdom, an 18K yellow gold deville with a gold dial and bracelet was on sale for 198 British pounds. In the 1960s, one British pound was worth the equivalent of $2.80, the equivalent of $554 in the 1960s, which was a huge amount of money for the time, when a hamburger at McDonald's cost 50 cents and a movie ticket around $1. A steel version with a steel bracelet was available for as little as 41 British pounds. Today's price structure is of course a little different. Good vintage models in steel or gold capped are available from $800 to $1,000. References in yellow gold with leather strap starts around 2000 and premium models with gold dial, case and bracelet are currently traded around eight to $9,000. If you have looked this far, you can rejoice because the historical part is no less exciting. The early 1960s were a stellar time for Omega. In 1957, the company had just launched its famous triple of tour watches, including the previously mentioned Omega Speedmaster, the Seamaster and the Realmaster. In the 1960, Omega was the official timekeeper of the Rome Olympics, further raising the company's profile. From the very beginning, the Omega DeVille stood for one thing, prestige. It was introduced by Omega in 1960 as a part of the Seamaster collection and was one of the leading dress watches at the time. Omega combined the water resistance case of the Seamaster line with high quality movements from Dressier references. The cases of the DeVille line, whether in steel or gold, were thinner and more elegant than their sportier contemporaries. So it's no wonder that with its refined style, which was an alternative to sporty models, the DeVille became one of the most sought after dress watches in the world. It went through a series of changes during its life. When it was launched in 1960, the name DeVille was not printed on the dial. Instead, the line marked itself through the monocoque design and its sporting heritage retaining the Seamaster name. 
However, as the market for dive watches grew in the 1960s, Omega decided to separate the two very different types of timepieces and make the DeVille a standalone collection. In this way, the elegance was not replaced by functionality. The DeVille could be worn with a suit without losing its waterproofness. In 1936, at the request of Norman Morris, Omega's brand representative in the US, Omega began printing both Seamaster and DeVille on the dials. And finally, in 1967, the DeVille stood on its own. As a standalone collection, the Omega DeVille proved to be highly sought after for its sleek, elegant design and reliable mechanical movements. In the 1970s, this piece won several awards. The Grand Prize Triumph of European Excellence from the Committee of European Excellence and six Golden Roses at the Baden-Baden Design Awards. The DeVille recalls back to a time of elegance and sleek modern design that was considered to the high of fashion in its day. And while unimpressive by today's excessive standards, it's a benchmark to which many brands, including Omega, are slowly returning. Today it remains at the heart of Omega's product range, drawing inspiration from the design of its predecessors. So that's all for today. We hope you enjoyed this topic as we do. And yeah, have a great day and we hope to see you in our next video.